Alrighty. I want to stay here for just a moment and I've kind of illustrated and, and uh, told you uh, that picking up and discharging uh, students is the, the driver must stay alert. First thing I want to talk about is the uh, right, the danger zone. This is the area immediately surrounding the school bus and it includes the 15 feet or foot area immediately surrounding the bus. So as we begin to talk about uh, loading and unloading students, uh, picking up discharging students, I want us to understand how uh, important it is that uh, you uh, load and unload students in a, in a manner that is safe, a manner that will uh, ensure the, the safety of the children first and foremost, but uh, also your surroundings. When uh, approaching the school bus stop, you know, approach it uh, slowly and carefully. You know, this is a especially important for a substitute driver who may not be familiar with the route. While you're approaching the bus stop, look for things that may not belong there. This could include a pedestrian, traffic, animals, or objects. Make a visual search to determine if any vehicles are passing the bus or attempting to stop. Also observe the number of students at the bus stop in their position. Make visual checks continuously of the area around your bus. This should include using your mirrors to check for students approaching from the rear of the bus. Be especially mindful of students who may be running late and rushing to get to the stop. Activate the flashing amber warning lights at least 200 feet or approximately five to 10 seconds before the school bus stop. Turn on your right turn signal about 100 or so feet or approximately three to 10 seconds uh, before pulling over. Check all mirrors to see if traffic is clear and is safe for you to stop. Continue to check all mirrors and to monitor the danger zones for students, traffic, and other objects. Move as far as possible to the right of the roadway. Now, I want to stop right there for just a, a moment and uh, acknowledge that uh, the majority of southeastern Oklahoma, northeastern, wherever this video is going out, uh, you're going to have uh, rural roads. That is, uh, when we call them uh, roads, uh, they're down here, they're dirt roads. Uh, they've got bar ditches on them. Uh, and if you move too far to the right, uh, you're going to run off into the bar ditch and you're going to get the, the bus stuck. Or also, if you move too far to the right, uh, the student will not be able to uh, board the uh, school bus safely. Uh, you'll have them walking in the bar ditch to get to the bus. So use, once again, common sense. And I understand uh, that uh, sometimes it's, it's very feasible uh, to uh, pull over to the right to get out of the uh, uh, traffic and, and load or unload a, a student in a, in a safe manner. Uh, but on those rural routes that you're back in the country, that are on dirt roads, uh, I understand that you cannot pull over uh, to the right as far as possible because you would put them in the bar ditch. So if, in, in those instances, you know, just be on high alert. Once again, a continual check, uh, monitoring of your mirrors, making sure that all your students are uh, sitting down, only those that are exiting the bus, getting off at that particular bus stop should be the only ones up when the bus is stopped 
And, uh, and, and so be in, be in charge. Make sure that your uh, students understand that. So approach the student uh, when you're loading it. Approach the student with extreme care, giving due consideration to the surface on which you're stopping. When the road surfaces are hazard due to weather or conditions, stop short of the bus stop by as much as 20 feet and then the, uh, ease the bus forward carefully to the stop. Instruct students to, to wait uh, a safe distance from the flow of traffic. Uh, also, uh, when you're uh, instructing your students as far as loading or unloading, uh, make sure that they understand uh, to watch uh, you and uh, wait for your signal to cross uh, over, uh, to come forward or, or whatever, because uh, you need to make sure that, that you have eyes on that student all the time and they're not trying uh, to uh, figure out if it's safe or unsafe to cross the bus. That is uh, the tra traffic flow. That is your job. Uh, as a, a bus driver. All right, when you instruct the students uh, to wait a safe distance from the flow of traffic, uh, especially when it's raining or something like that, stopping uh, uh, the, the driver should pull the bus once again as far off the road and if it, and if that you can, it is possible. Make sure the place where you load does not have an obstacle such as uh, potholes that will be hazardous to the student. Bring the bus to a full stop with the front bumper at least 10 feet away from the student at the designated stop. Uh, and, I, and let me back up and say, I would say, you know, 10 to 15 feet. Uh, because you're in that, you, you know, within 10 feet, you're getting within that danger zone there. Uh, so, so, you know, it, it's important to, uh, let's say 10 to 15 feet, uh, but make sure that you can see eyes on, I have your eyes on that student at, at all time. Now you can, let's say at, at 10 feet, maybe if you have some high school students or some middle school students that are, that are tall, that, that you can see. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, some of those little kindergartners uh, and elementary students, uh, sometimes they, they, they can barely get up uh, the steps of the bus. So in, in those instances, I'll, I'll make sure that, that uh, you, you stop uh, a sufficient amount of, of distance away from them uh, in order to keep them safe. Uh, be sure to bring the bus to a full stop. Once again, with the front bumper at least 10 to 15 feet away from the student. You know, this forces the student to walk to the bus so you have a better view of their movement. The student should also be uh, waiting for the bus, uh, you know, 10 feet from the edge of the roadway. If students are not complying with this, remind them as uh, they uh, board the bus to uh, to remember the the, the safety uh, things that you as a driver have told your students on what you expect them to uh, act and uh, where they need to be standing, uh, so on and so forth. And as I say this, uh, I, I wanna also uh, tell the drivers, you drivers, it's very important that you have a regular schedule. You leave uh, your, the bus yard, uh, I'm going to say within, you know, two to three minutes at the same time each and every day that you drive the bus. Put those children in a frame of mind that they know that, well, my bus driver is going to be showing up at 705 or 708, something like that. Uh, and it's your responsibility to, to leave uh, each morning as close as you can. I understand things happen uh, that you can't always do that, but 98% uh, uh, of the time, uh, you should be able to leave uh, at, uh, at the same time uh, each, each morning. But so if students are not complying with 
your commands and and uh, you know remind them, uh, but also it, it it lays upon your shoulders to make sure that you're doing your part uh, to uh, have that child knowing that there is a routine. He is he or she is in a routine to load, be loading at a certain time and a certain spot, day in and day out. Uh, but when you're stopped, set the parking brake or emergency brake. There will be times you're, you're tempted to skip this step and just keep the service brake covered. Uh, remember, I, I, I want to say this is not acceptable. Uh, it, 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 it takes a little more uh, effort. I'm, I'm not going to say uh, any more time. Uh, it, it's more of an effort for you to reach up, uh, whether it's a, a manual or uh, uh, Air brake, uh, emergency brake system. It, it, it it's it's more uh, of just reaching up and uh, pushing a button or, or putting your foot down. Uh, the parking brake must be set uh, at every school stop. You you never know what is going to take place uh, at the uh, the next stop. What you're going to be faced with uh, while you're loading or unloading the student. Uh, there may be an emergency where you have to quickly get up out of your seat and, uh, you know, we're uh, creatures of habit. And uh, if you're not setting that break, it, it will come back one of these times and, and it could uh, injure a student or a uh, do damage to the, the bus. So once again, the park brake must be set at every uh, school bus stop. And this is also uh, goes uh, into effect. Also, can I say uh, when you are uh, in the bus line uh, loading uh, the students from, uh, from school. The other thing, place the transmission into neutral. Open your service door slightly activating the red lights. Now, uh, be on high alert when you crack that door that uh, all your students are, are seated. Uh, there's none running up and down the aisles. They're, they're all uh, uh, contained in the, their, their seat uh, because you're approaching an area, you're fixing to uh, perform a uh, service that is very, very dangerous. When you open that door, uh, many things can happen. And uh, I hate to say many bad things can happen, but you can avoid those things uh, if you, once again, set the part break, put the transmission in neutral, uh, and uh, you'll be good to go. And when you open the service door slightly and, and your red lights are going, once again, your stop uh side stop arm, your crossing arm uh, should automatically uh, activate uh, and uh, the Amber's uh, flashing lights uh, will go to your uh, flashing red lights. Uh, now, one of the things that you want to uh, understand that when uh, you are going from your uh, Amber uh, to your reds, uh, your Amber's tail the surrounding uh, drivers that you're about to do something on that bus. Uh, you have that red, the red comes, the stop arm comes out. Uh, they're telling those surrounding drivers that you are loading or unloading students. Something is coming out of that bus or something is going into that bus. Uh, and uh, so always remember that's what you, you're communicating these things. Uh, so that's why it's so very important that uh, by activating your, your lights in a, in a uh, correct way is, is very safe. Uh, now, many buses will not activate the red flashing light unless the door is open all the way. Uh, so, but these, uh, uh, in these buses, the driver must teach the student that the open door does not invite them uh, onto the bus. Only, only the driver invites 
the student onto the bus. And what I mean by inviting the student on the bus, uh, when you stopped and that door is open and the red lights are going, uh, that's not a uh, automatic uh, ticket for that child to come running uh, to the bus. You give the, uh, the uh, sign and, and you can designate ever how you wanna do if you wave at them or if you give them the come sign with your uh, hands, you know, uh, motion them forward, anything like that, uh, raise your right hand, uh, raise your left hand or, or what, what, whatever. Whatever you decide, uh, you instruct your students that that is the sign for them to uh, come aboard or to approach, can I say, uh, approach the bus and uh, to uh, uh, enter the bus. All school buses, though, manufactured after 2012 and sold in Oklahoma must allow the, the driver to activate the flashing red lights without opening uh, the service door. You know, check to confirm that all traffic is stopped. Now, when you're uh, uh, loading and unloading, there's situations where uh, when you're loading uh, students on a, on a route that they will have to cross the highway, they have to cross in front of the uh, school bus, uh, and then that is very, very dangerous. And I encourage you to try to run your route, try to schedule your route, uh, uh, that uh, you can pick up on right side only. Now, that would be in a perfect world uh, if we could do that. And I understand that that is not uh, possible, but to uh, just make sure though, that those times that, that uh, the student has to cross the road, whether exiting or entering the, the bus, uh, make sure that all traffic is stopped. You know, the students inside the bus have uh, remained seated and those students outside the bus waiting uh, for the driver's commands. Uh, once again, as you can see, and, and, and most of us, uh, you know, there are new bus drivers that come aboard every year across the state of Oklahoma, and this may be your first time in, in uh, or your first year of driving a school bus. And uh, I applaud you for that. I applaud you for wanting to, uh, to drive the bus, to be a part of those students' uh, transportation needs. Uh, but the majority of the drivers, you know, been doing this, you've been doing this for a long, long time. Uh, I know where I uh, employed my bus drivers uh, have been anywhere from uh, 10 uh, to 30 years have been driving a, a school bus. They know it inside and out. And some have been on the same route uh, for year after year after year. So uh, I'm not telling those any different, uh, just for trying to remind, let's say, remind the, the seasoned bus driver uh, that uh, to be very, very careful and make sure that all students uh, will have remained seated and that those students on the outside of the bus do not move until the driver uh, gives them that command or that signal. Once this is done, once you've given the signal for them to, to load, only then, you know, can you open the door, should open the service door all the way and invite them onto the bus. Loading, since not all buses, once again, allow to activate the red lights before the student must learn not to board the bus when the door opens. Wait, and, and, and I, I keep harping on this and going back to it over and over again on the last few slides, but it is vitally important that you teach those students to wait until you have given them, the bus driver has given them the uh, signal and invites them on the board, onto the bus, excuse me. Uh, you know, so think about that. Um, the driver, are you ready for the student? You know, signal the students to board the bus, but do not extend your hand out the window because drivers may misinterpret this as a sign to pass you. Uh, you, you never know what that, that 
driver there sees you stick your left arm out the, the window, he may automatically think, well, he's motioning me for coming on. And you would be surprised who people would that, that people will drive past that red light, that red stop sign, and saying, well, the bus driver waved me on, waved me on. So uh, never stick your left hand uh, out the uh, driver's side uh, window. As a driver, I believe it's vitally important that you count the students while loading to ensure all students uh, are, are there. You've, you've driven up on the, the stop. Uh, you've got uh, three students uh, or half a dozen students, whichever the case may be. Uh, you've counted them and you've given them the signal to come across. And as they step on the bus, I mean, one, two, three, four, whatever the case may be, you make sure uh, if there's three there, that three little heads are coming up that step uh, and do not put the bus in into uh, motion uh, and, and until you have a, a count and have account, accounted for every person at that stop. And once again, the same way with unloading, I would probably say when you're unloading them, uh, you need to give them a, a little more time uh, if they have to cross the street. Uh, across the road, uh, you know, once again, if you uh, if you get a, a six or seven and there's some stops that uh, you may be letting off at a daycare center uh, and you'll have 12 to 15 kids uh, getting off at that one stop. Uh, it, it's still your responsibility as the driver. Uh, if you count 15 heads going out that uh, you count 15 heads uh, going in the door that are, and, and then, you know, check your mirrors. Uh, so once again, back to the uh, misinterpreting, uh, the driver may anticipate, uh, misinterpret the uh, bus driver if you stick your hand out the left uh, window. So don't do that. Uh, knowing the names of your student. Uh, is is always advisable, uh, and uh, but I, I will tell you that I'm not a a, a regular driver. I uh, substitute uh, drive a lot, but uh, you know I do not know the students. But as a regular bus driver, uh, the driver who drives that route day in and day out, it is advisable that you know each student's name you know if a student is missing at a stop you know ask the other students where is that student at is he sick is he running late uh because you know once you start pulling away from the uh bus stop uh many things can happen that child can come running out and especially in these rural areas uh they may be uh playing a joke or something and and hiding behind a tree or in the bushes and run out and and uh you know many many bad things can happen from that uh so always remember that uh even though some kids are very mature uh they're still they're still kids and uh sometimes they don't they don't think but you as the driver should know each student and uh and you uh reg the regular bus drivers can can get a feel and understand that, well, I, you know, this, I'm three months in or two months in to the school year and uh, Sarah hasn't missed a day. And then all of a sudden you pull up and, and only Sarah's sister is out there, uh, you know, acknowledge where is, where is she at? And I think that also tells other students that hear that and, and, the uh, the sisters or the brothers of the of the student that is missing, uh, it, it may show that the, the bus driver, hey, I really care about that. The bus driver really cares about me or my sister. <clears throat> also, remember though, and back to uh, the you know the school bus driver. As a school bus driver, you should be able to see all students at all time. Uh, this is especially true. Uh, when the students must cross the street to board the bus. Students must be taught to stay out of the danger zone as they cross the street. 
Now the danger zone, and, and I and I see this a lot uh, when I'm driving, and, and other drivers, you probably see this a lot. That when students have to cross the street, they get right to the edge of the front of the bus there, and they cut across. Encourage or train your students to walk past that bus, to walk past that bus, you know, out of the 15 foot danger zone. And uh, then look at you for the signal to cross. Uh, so once again, teach your students uh, to cross at least, you know, 10 to 15 feet in front of the bus or far enough in front of the bus that the driver sees the child's feet. If you have concerns uh, about a street crossing condition at a particular stop, it could be a poor sight distance, long crossing distance for the student, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, whatever it could be, let uh, your transportation director or your supervisor know immediately. And then he is the transportation director or your supervisor uh, is, is, uh, should go out and uh, investigate and make sure that, that uh, if there's anything that can be done to uh, ensure that stop be a, a safer stop. Should students should know to look both ways before they cross the street to board a bus. Even if they've been invited to cross the street uh, and board the bus by the driver. You know, I, I mean, once again, I've said that they should be watching you, but at the same time, uh, you, you need to encourage them uh, to quickly check uh, to make sure nothing is coming. Uh, the signal, we, we, we've talked about uh, uh, that. Uh, as far as uh, them inviting them on the uh, uh, school bus, but there are times, you know, it's not if, but it is when it happens that there's going to be an emergency situation that you're going to be uh, loading or unloading students and uh, somebody's going to come across, uh, come over a hill or going to be in a hurry uh, and uh, not see the school bus. All they see is something in front of them uh, is obstructing their uh, driving and they're going to go around it. Uh, and you would be surprised that people would say, well, I didn't know it was the school bus. So what I'm, what I'm getting at is that when those times happen, when that emergency situation, uh, that emergency situation uh, arises, have some type of signal for that student that when that student hears that signal, they automatically freeze. And I can't think of a better continuous signal than a continuous honking the horn. You know, alert that child. I mean, lay down on that horn uh, like, you know, your hand is a piece of metal and that's a strong magnet. Uh, lay down on that horn and make sure that your students know that when they hear that horn, they automatically stop in their tracks. When the signal is given for the child, the, the, the child should know what to do. Get out of the street quickly, once again, or stop in his tracks, uh, depending on, on where it's at. You know, the driver, uh, as a driver, I want you you know, not tolerate crowding or pushing as students cross the street and board the bus. Make sure, you know, single file, uh, you would be surprised. You say, well, I cannot uh, make those children do that. But, you know, if you do over and over and over again, it's kind of like what hill do you want to die on, so to speak. If, if you tell that child day after day after day, look, this is the way you cross the street. This is the way I want you to cross the street. Uh, and it's non-negotiable. You'd be surprised at the students that will eventually come around. Now, some are going to be knuckleheads and, and uh, it may take a little bit longer, but uh, 
you know, those are, are few and far between. Uh, but when they cross the street, as they cross the street uh, and they begin to, to load the bus, it needs to be slowly, single file, uh, and using the handrail. Once the bus student uh, is seated uh, and uh, you're ready to go, uh, you know, now you need to start as the driver, you need to start preparing your, uh, your bus to go back into the flow of traffic. Uh, the first thing that you need to, I think that you need to check on to make sure that the student is seated and then the aisle is uh, unobstructed, that there's nothing there that's blocking your view uh, from seeing all the way back. Uh, do not allow students to sit on top of each other's laps. No more than three students can sit in a single seat. All students and excuse me, and students are not permitted to stand while the bus is in motion. Uh, I know that is a uh, uh, that is a battle to have uh, those students sit and never get up. Uh, I mean, there's something about it that you know, they got ants in their pants or what? I don't know, uh, but I know it's for me as a driver that that is one of the things that I battle day in and day out is making sure that those students stay seated while the bus is in motion. Uh, and I think there's uh, enough in place. You can, once again, uh, you can go to uh, your supervisor, uh, your transportation director, uh, then if that doesn't fit, uh, fix the problem, uh, next step, check with the principals. Check with the principal at the building and, and say, look, uh, Miss." Uh, Mr. Joey here, he just does not want to uh, stay seated. Uh, and then action can be taken. Uh, don't proceed once again until all students are seated. This step can save a child's life. All right, you check all mirrors, especially your crossover mirrors for students. Make sure no one is running to catch the bus. If you cannot account for a student, secure the bus, take the key and check around and underneath the bus. When all students are accounted for, prepare to leave. Close the door, engage the transmission, release the parking brake, turn on left signal, checking all mirrors again. And Allowing for congested, if, if it is congested uh, uh, area that you've got several uh, vehicles that are uh, behind you and are in front of you, uh, hopefully they won't pass you, go around you, but those that are in front of you, you know, motion for them or let those, that flow of traffic uh, going through before uh, you take off. But when it is safe, and all students are seated uh, and you've turned on your left turn signal, uh, enter into traffic. When you get into the flow of traffic, turn off uh, your left turn signal and proceed to the next stop. All righty, we are going to uh, view a uh, a video uh, on uh, loading and, and unloading students. I'm gonna drive along as if I'm driving on a road approaching a stop. My step one is going to be checking my mirrors, left mirror, top mirror, right mirror. Step two, I'm going to apply my amber warning lights approximately 300 to 100 feet before my designated stop location.
Step three, I'm gonna turn on my right turn signal and pull over as far to the right as possible, stopping approximately 10 feet before my designated stop. Step four, I'm gonna secure the bus. Step five, I'm gonna cancel my signal. Step six, I'm gonna check my mirrors. Left mirror, top mirror, right mirror. Step seven, I'm gonna activate my red lights. Step eight, I'm gonna look in my mirrors again. Left mirror, top mirror, right mirror. Step nine, I'm gonna open the door and instruct any kids I have that are getting off at this location to get off the bus, stand approximately 10 feet in front of the bus and wait for my signal to cross. Step 10, I'm gonna check my mirrors, left mirror, top mirror, right mirror, and when it's clear, I'm gonna instruct the kids to go across the street, and I'm gonna monitor traffic while they're crossing, make sure they get across safely. Step 11, I'm gonna close my door. I'm gonna... Step 12, put my bus in gear. Off. Step 13, I'm gonna Check my mirrors, left mirror, top mirror, right mirror. Step 14, I'm gonna turn on my left signal. And now I'm on step 15, which is my big mirror check. I'm gonna check my left mirror, top mirror, right mirror, front and back of the loading door my right crossover, left crossover, and I'm gonna end on my left mirror, and when it's safe to do so, I'll proceed into traffic. All righty, now we're all through with the uh, loading and uh, unloading of the students. Uh, hang in there, we're almost finished. This is the last section of this uh, video uh, or uh, this uh, tutorial, I guess you could say, how you want to put it. Uh, but just hang in there because we're almost through. We're going to be talking about railroad crossing. Uh, I'm not going to say uh, that the railroad crossing procedures are one of the most, uh, are the most important, but it is one of the most because there are many, many things I don't think that you can uh, honestly rank them in importance uh, in, you know, in transportation of student. Everything you do from the time that you uh, turn that ignition to you turn it off and leave for the day is vitally, vitally important. Uh, but we can say that railroad crossing procedures are one of the most important safety issues uh, for a school bus. Although it is one of the safest uh, uh, vehicles on the highway talking about a, a school bus, uh, a school bus does not have a chance when involved in a collision with the train. Because of its size and weight, a train cannot stop quickly. There are three different types of crossings. Aren't the, the three types of crossing, <clears throat> excuse me, is passive crossing, active crossing, and a signal controlled crossing, a passive in crossing. This type of crossing does not have any type of control device such as lights or on, arms, cross on. Passive crossing requires bus drivers to recognize the crossing, actively search the tracks for an approaching train and decide if there is sufficient space to safely go across the tracks. 
Usually the only type of warning of these types of crossing are warning signs and pavement markings. However, the driver needs to be extremely cautious when driving across these here. Active crossing. These types of crossing have traffic control devices to regulate traffic. These active devices include flashing red lights, some with bells and some without, and flashing red lights with bells and crossing arms. These types of crossings are usually found in high density traffic areas. A signal controlled crossing. These types of crossings are controlled by traffic signals because they are in an awkward area. The traffic signal works in conjunction with the cross arms and lights at the crossing. Signs and signals. Uh, I want you to kind of look at these here, uh, and these are the different types of signs that uh, you will uh, encounter when you are at a uh, railroad crossing. These signs are, is, is, are a bus driver's warning system and gives them time to prepare uh, for the tracks they're approaching. The black on yellow sign is found at the start of most crossing and warns the driver to slow down, to stop, look, and listen for approaching train. Black on yellow, all righty. Now, this, there is uh, a, cross buck sign also. Uh, and this sign requires that the bus driver yield the right of way to the train. The, the cross buck sign uh, is uh, usually there on the right at right at the tracks. All right, you know, how can you have a safe railroad crossing day in and day out? Uh, each time uh, that you uh, leave school. I know, I know some schools maybe not have that uh, uh, many railroads to cross, uh, tracks to cross, but there's some. I, I know of a, uh, a place that uh, it, was, it was just astronomical how many different times uh, a bus would uh, go across the railroad tracks when you have seven or eight routes and each bus will cross four to five sets of tracks, some as much as uh, 10 or 12 sets of tracks, uh, you can see the number of uh, crossings that, that one uh, school system can have. So it's, it's, it's important that you, uh, just like loading and unloading students, uh, you have a system, you have a routine, <coughs> and you do not uh, deviate from that uh, routine. Uh, first and foremost, school buses must stop at all crossings with or without passengers and ensure it is safe before proceeding across the tracks. When you're approaching the tracks, when you're approaching the crossing, slow down. It has been recommended to slow the bus even as much as a half a mile uh, per hour on the crossing. Now, uh, once again, I, I, I want you to, you know, use common sense here uh, and, uh, you know, be aware of your surroundings and, you uh, there's nothing wrong with crossing that track at a half a mile an hour. Uh, but, you know, if you're in a, a busy intersection, you've got uh, cars behind you, so on and so forth. I mean, going around you, there, there, there's no sense in, in crossing it at a half mile an hour. You know, three or four miles an hour, five miles an hour is, is, is okay. Uh, but the main thing is to slow down, to slow down. Uh, because when you slow down, this allows you as the driver uh, to react properly uh, to things around you and what's going on. The driver starts by engaging her four-way hazard lights approximately 
uh, 300 feet before reaching the crossing. As the driver approaches the track, scan your surroundings, uh, check mirrors for any traffic behind the bus. The driver then taps the brake for additional warning. This alerts that the bus is about to stop. As the driver reaches the crossing, driver pulls the bus up no closer than 15 feet and no further than 50 feet uh, to the nearest from the nearest rail. The driver then positions themselves to get the best view of the track. At the crossing, the driver turns off her radio, uh, the noisy equipment, quiets the bus so they can listen uh, for anything, uh, you know, an approaching train to uh, a uh, emergency vehicle, uh, whatever the case may be. It's a good practice to keep the window in the first seat on the right side of the bus down it uh it, it and, I, and i would go ahead and go to say as far as that is a must uh to uh, to have that uh first window in the right seat uh beside the driver open you know take time to look and listen uh for approaching train you know stay focused and and, and do not do not rush after safely viewing the tracks and making the judgment that it is safe to proceed, check the tracks once more before crossing. As you begin to cross the track, uh, crossing the track in the, in, in the uh, uh, bus, don't change gears, don't do anything out of the ordinary other than give it gas to get across those tracks. This allows the bus uh, to stay, uh, uh, to not have anything uh, potentially happen uh, that would uh, allow the bus to stop and be stalled on uh, the, the bus. It, can, we might say this allows the bus safely to clear the tracks and lessens the chance of the bus stalling on the tracks. Do not stop the bus until completely across the tracks. If you have to, if you have to stop the bus, if there's an emergency situation on the bus, uh, you know, don't stop on the tracks. Uh, and that's kind of one of those duh moments, but uh, you never know. Uh, but uh, always remember, never, never, never stop on uh, the tracks. After safely crossing the tracks, uh, as the driver, turn off your four-way hazards uh, and uh, complete uh, the uh, crossing, after you completed the crossing, and then move forward. You know, if the bus stalls on the railroad tracks, issue an immediate evacuation of everybody that is on board of that school bus. Don't try to start the bus. Don't try to play mechanic. Don't radio for somebody and ask for information or get something to do. Uh, immediately evacuate uh, the bus. You know, the bus driver teaches the students to leave the bus in an angle away from the tracks in the direction of the train. If there's a train coming, you go towards the track, to, excuse me, towards the train uh, at a 45 degree angle away from the train. That is because when impact happens, all the debris should be back behind and you, uh, the, the students. Once again, doing this reduces the chance of the student or the bus driver being struck by flying debris. Uh, if you view the, if your view of your, of the tracks is not adequate, do not attempt to cross them until you can see that there is no train approaching. Uh, once again, take an extra time, extra time to make sure that there's nothing coming and you can uh, cross that track in a safe manner. Uh, I want you to remember this, a train moving at 60 miles per hour is moving approximately 90 feet per second. And it can cover a quarter of a mile 
in about 15 seconds. It takes a bus approximately 15 seconds to cross a set of tracks. So in that 15 seconds, that train that is moving 60 miles an hour is already covered a quarter of a mile. Now you can just kind of think there that, that, uh, that they take up a lot of real estate real quick, real quick. And it, and it, it, it will be catastrophic. Well, folks, that's all. I hope you've uh, enjoyed it. I hope that you have a safe and happy, happy, happy school year. Uh, if there's anything that myself uh, can uh, further assist you in, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to uh, get in contact with me. Um, I am the uh, transportation director at Antlers Public Schools in Antlers, Oklahoma. And uh, if you want to get in touch with me through phone, uh, you may you can call that uh, Antler Schools and they will get in touch with me. So once again, have a safe and happy school year. And we'll see you next year.